Everyone seems to love to watch things burn. This attraction to fire is why you can sit in front of a bonfire for hours staring into the flames. But have you ever thought about fire in a more scientific way? In this video, we're going to investigate a specific substance that burns, and the substance that we are looking at is called ethanol, or ethyl alcohol. We have an ambitious set of goals to achieve in order to explain what happens when ethanol burns, so let's go ahead and take a look at those goals. In this video, we want to be able to use what we already know in order to make predictions about what happens when ethanol burns. We want to be able to use BTB and a scale to observe what happens when ethanol burns, and we want to be able to use these observations to explain what happens when ethanol burns. So to meet our goals, what this really means is we're going to have to burn stuff, hmm. but how should we go about investigating ethanol burning? So to start off, we should probably put on some safety gear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's probably a little extreme, but we should at least put on a pair of safety goggles. Alright, that's better. So to investigate ethanol, it might be helpful to compare it to water. So here we have two glass dishes. We have ethanol on the left and water on the right. You can't really tell them apart just by looking at them, but there are other observations that we can make to compare these two liquids. Ethanol has a strong, sharp chemical odor, and it also evaporates really quickly. Water is odorless and takes a lot longer than ethanol does to evaporate. Let's make one more simple observation to compare ethanol and water. Let's compare how they burn. Let's drop a lit match into our ethanol to see what happens. So you can see it burns right away, and it burns very, very hot. We can see that it's putting out a lot of energy. There's a lot of heat, there's a lot of light, and there's even movement energy as the flame moves around. So let's try the same thing with water. Here comes our match. But unlike ethanol, the water will not burn. In fact, it's actually put out the flame. That seems pretty important, and we'll want to remember that for later. Let's look at one more way besides water that we can put out this flame. So let's light up our ethanol again, and let's place a shatterproof beaker over the flame. You should be able to make two important observations about what just happened. Take a moment think about what those are. So the first thing you should notice is that the flame went away. It was extinguished when we placed the beaker over it. The other thing you should notice is that condensation appeared on the inside of that beaker. That's water, and that's another thing we should remember for later. Besides these initial observations, what else can we do to investigate burning ethanol even further? Earlier in this series, we investigated what happens when soda fizzes. Maybe we can use the same investigation tools to figure out what happens when ethanol burns. We can use a scale to figure out how burning the ethanol changes its mass. If the mass of the ethanol increases as it burns, that means that molecules are entering the ethanol. If the mass decreases, that means that molecules are leaving the ethanol. The other tool we can use is BTB. It turns yellow when it becomes acidic, as is the case when carbon dioxide is added. This means BTB can help us identify gases. First, let's mass our dish. And all by itself, the dish weighs 22.29 grams. Now let's take a little ethanol and fill our dish about halfway. And let's look at that mass now. So the ethanol plus the dish give us a mass of 40.49 grams. So let's do a little math. The mass of the dish by itself is 22.29 grams. After we added the ethanol, the total was 40.49 grams. So if we take that total, and if we subtract the mass of the dish, what we have left is the mass of the ethanol, and that comes out to 18.20 grams. So let's think about how we're going to run this investigation. Let's pour a dish of BTP and place that next to a dish of ethanol. We're going to want to make sure that they're very close together. We'll use a lighter so we can get a flame going on our ethanol. Then we'll place a shatterproof dish over the whole thing. That way we can trap any gases that are involved. So let's dim the lights and begin our investigation. So there's our flame on the ethanol, throwing out a lot of energy. And let's carefully set our container over the whole thing. So we're going to let this sit for about 20 minutes, and we'll come back then to get our results. While we're waiting for our results, let's go ahead and make some predictions. What do you think will happen to the ethanol's mass? 
we can refer to this as the matter movement question. What about the color of the BTB? What do you think that's going to do? Since the BTB tells us about any changes in chemicals, we can refer to this as the matter change question. Go ahead and pause the video and take a moment to predict what you think we'll observe. <laughs> All right, let's check in on our investigation and see what happened. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we notice is that the BTB turned yellow. Here's its original color. But how about the mass of the ethanol? Did that change? Mm -hmm. Well, let's find out. Here's our scale. And if we place the ethanol on the scale, what does it read? So the mass of the dish with the ethanol in it is 38.03 grams. Using the same arithmetic that we used earlier, we find that the mass of the ethanol remaining in the dish after we burned it to be 15.74 grams. To calculate the ethanol's change in mass, we just have to take the mass after we burned it and subtract the mass before we burned it. So we can calculate the mass change to be negative 2.46 grams. That means the ethanol lost mass as it burned. Now let's use an evidence-based argument tool to come to some conclusions. In the middle column, we'll record any observations that we made regarding each of our questions. On the right column, we'll try to come to some conclusions about what each of those observations means. Notice that we added a third row to address any questions we have about energy. So as far as the matter movement question, we found that the mass of ethanol decreased. As far as the matter change question, we found that the BTB changed from green to yellow. That means it became acidic. And as far as the energy question, we found that heat, light, and movement energy came out of the flame. So what conclusions can we draw from all these observations? Take a moment to pause the video and come up with one conclusion for each observation. Our first observation must mean that atoms or molecules escaped from the burning ethanol. They left. Otherwise, how could the mass decrease? What about the observation that our BTB changed from green to yellow? Well, we've already seen that one of the things that turns BTB yellow is when carbon dioxide is added, for instance, from your breath. So it's reasonable to conclude that carbon dioxide went into the BTB, and the only place it could have come from was that burning flame. What about all the energy that we saw come out of our flame? What can we conclude from that? Like matter, energy can't be created out of nowhere. What that means is that energy must have been released from the flame. Naturally, this invites the question, where did the energy come from? We'll talk about this more in our next video. So our last task in this video is to try to get everything that we've observed and learned into a model. So here's the flame for our burning ethanol. Let's model all that energy coming out of the flame. The next thing we observed was that cutting off the air killed the flame, and that water appeared as condensation on the inside of the beaker. That means that our model has to include water coming out of the flame and oxygen coming in. Anytime oxygen reacts with a fuel like ethanol releasing energy, we call that combustion. Recall also that during combustion, the ethanol decreased in mass. That means that mass escaped from the ethanol in the form of atoms and molecules. In the next part of our investigation, we placed a dish over the flame. Next to it, we placed some green neutral BTB. The BTB changed from green to yellow, indicating that carbon dioxide went into the BTB. We know that this is true because your breath, which is made of carbon dioxide, will do the same thing. And the only place that carbon dioxide could have come from is the flame. All the energy coming out of the flame must have come from somewhere, so for now we'll just call that potential energy. We'll talk more about the energy question in the next video. Before we go, let's review our goals to make sure that we met them all. You should be able to use what you already know to make predictions about what happens when ethanol burns. Use BTB in a scale to observe what happens when ethanol burns. And then use our observations to explain what happens when ethanol burns. In the next video, we'll address what happens at the nanoscale. 
We'll also address our energy question in more detail. The last thing we want to do in this video is to give you a chance to come up with some questions that you still have about what happens when things burn. So at this point, pause the video and come up with a few questions. Here's some that we came up with. Why does energy come out of a flame when something burns? What determines whether a substance will burn? And what is the chemical formula for ethanol? We'll address all these questions in the coming videos. Until next time, remember, you can learn anything. Thank <laughs> you.